Well, hello everyone, and once again, it is uh, a great delight for me to welcome a colleague uh, and friend uh, here to the State Department. The Foreign Minister uh, and I have had an excellent uh, working relationship earlier this year. I traveled to Brazil for the third meeting of the U.S.-Brazil Global Partnership Dialogue, as well as the Rio Plus 20 conference, and I commend uh, the Brazilian government uh, for its excellent uh, stewardship of the Rio Plus 20 uh, conference. And today, uh, the foreign minister is here for the fourth meeting of the Global Partnership Dialogue. Uh, it is our assessment that this dialogue has strengthened and broadened our relationship uh, and helped us make progress in many areas of shared concern by bringing both our governments and our people uh, closer together. Uh, we have not only worked bilaterally, but uh, regionally and globally. For example, we have signed memoranda of understanding on cooperation in third countries, uh, including in development and food security. Uh, we're working to support greater agricultural development in Honduras. Uh, we are strong supporters of the uh, Brazilian uh, plan, the scientific mobility program, uh, one of President uh, Rousseff's uh, signature uh, initiatives to send top Brazilian students in science and math to universities abroad. Uh, we are uh, similarly focused on implementing President Obama's initiative, the 100,000 strong in the Americas, and have welcomed thousands of Brazilian students to the United States and are eager to welcome more. Uh, and because social inclusion is critical to both of our societies, uh, we are uh, working together to ensure uh, that uh, we promote social inclusion as part of uh, uh, the missions of our foreign relations as well as, of course, uh, domestically. Uh, we are also working uh, very uh, in great cooperation in Haiti, uh, and I thank uh, the minister for the uh, excellent leadership that Brazil has provided uh, for uh, uh, Manusta and so much else that Brazil has done uh, for Haiti. Uh, so there's a lot uh, that we have covered and our teams have gone uh, in depth into. Uh, and uh, Antonio, it's a great pleasure for me to uh, have you here. Thank you so much. Uh, let me say how pleased I am to be in Washington for this fourth edition of our Global Partnership Dialogue. We've had frequent high-level contacts between Brazil and the United States over the past two years. We're very happy to welcome President Obama last year to Brasilia, and um, President Dilma was delighted to come to the White House this year. Um, we had two visits by Secretary of State Hillary Clinton to Brazil, uh, one in the context of the Global Partnership Dialogue and also the Open Government Partnership that we have uh, been working on together. Um, then uh, for Rio Plus 20, and of course we appreciated greatly the U.S. participation and uh, Secretary Clinton's statement at uh, the Conference on Sustainable Development. This is my second time in Washington. Um, we are not only having frequent high-level contacts, but I think the quality of the uh, dialogue has also been um, uh, improving and uh, more in-depth discussions on issues such as uh, possibilities for cooperation in Africa. This time around, we concentrated on the Middle East and the Far East. Uh, and I know that the two undersecretaries who came with me, uh, they found this extremely useful. Uh, so we would like to pursue and institutionalize, as you said, uh, Hillary, uh, this uh, mechanism so that we continue uh, deriving um, the greatest possible benefit from these discussions. Uh, on the bilateral front, um, President Dilma, of course, is extremely interested in enhancing our relationship with the United States on science, technology, and innovation. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, two events on innovation in 2013 that come out of this agenda, uh, and that will bring in the private sector as well as government officials. Um, we're very pleased with the advances that we've identified in our aviation partnership. Uh, there are new initiatives on energy, on sports. Um, if you look at the joint communique that we're putting out, it actually is very eloquent on a number of fronts and shows that uh, from April to October um, there have been many advances. Um, so uh, this is the spirit in which we would like to continue moving forward. Of course, we're extremely grateful for the U.S. Uh, 
and their uh, readiness to receive an increasing number of Brazilian students in the sciences. Already 2,400 are studying under the Science Without Borders uh, program. We'd like to take that number to 48,000, <laughs> and uh, I think um, we, we can get there. We can reach this goal. Uh, let me just mention that on uh, another front, there have been discussions on um, visas uh, and how to facilitate travel between the two countries. This is a discussion that has started in a new spirit, also uh, under instructions from our leaders, President Obama and President Rousseff, and we are uh, confident that they will continue advancing uh, over the coming years. Um, thank you for mentioning Haiti. I think it's a good example of how Brazil and the United States can work together. And today we discussed some new um, ideas for um, looking at energy in Haiti, uh, food security, uh, trade, business. Um, I am confident that we will also continue cooperating very effectively. And finally, um, I think it was very useful for me to have a discussion on the Middle East. Uh, we're, of course, concerned with uh, lack of progress on the peace process between Israel and Palestine. I've just come back from the region, extremely concerned with the situation in Syria. Um, but um, I think it's extremely important that um, with uh, uh, th these discussions we're having with the United States and a number of growing number of, of countries, um, um, among which permanent members of the Security Council, um, our partners in IBSA, uh, India and South Africa, that we can um, mobilize uh, international diplomatic um, uh, strength to uh, resume the peace process and to find a negotiated solution for Syria. Thank you. Two per each two people. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. <laughs> Foreign Minister, it's nice to see you again. Um, I'm sure you're following our political uh, campaign with great fanfare. I just want to ask you, we had a debate the other night on foreign policy. And you know, the, he the hemisphere and, and uh, the continent wasn't even brought up once. And I'm just wondering, given the robust partnership with Brazil, Brazil's a rising power, and the, the cooperation with the region and a lot of other dynamic growing countries, whether that's symptomatic of, some, of, of a problem in America that you think uh, this, the P American people don't, aren't interested in or don't understand how important this cooperation is, Secretary Clinton, um, on Syria, I was wondering if you have any thoughts on the ceasefire, whether you think the government or the rebels will uh, adhere to this. What are you advising the rebels? Um, and whether you think the current Lebanese government um, is able to uh, protect the Lebanese sovereignty um, from getting involved in the Syrian crisis. And just beg my <laughs> indulgence, one more, just beg my indulgence. I just want to ask you uh, very quickly about these emails that have surfaced um, from the State Department on the night of the Benghazi attack. Um, given the fact that there was some information that an extremist group with links to um, Al Qaeda affiliates um, was could have been involved, why wasn't this have more heavily weighed in your assessment in the days after? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, briefly, I may forget one or two of the questions. Briefly on, on the debate, of course, um, well, <laughs> as the two largest democracies in the Americas, uh, we um, are you know, firm believers in, in uh, pluralism, uh, and uh, elections are always an interesting moment for us to <laughs> identify that. Um, but. Um, Yes, it's true that Latin America was not present, uh, to my knowledge, and Brazil was not mentioned. But um, I think that the debate concentrated really on problem issues uh, and concerns. And uh, today, uh, Brazil, South America in particular, uh, is more of a, of a region of the world that offers solutions uh, than problems. So we interpret that in uh, this positive light. At the same time, um, I think it's very important to note that the contexts have been frequent at high level. The quality of the, the dialogue between Brazil and the United States is improving continuously. The agenda is broadening, as Secretary Clinton was saying. Uh, so uh, we are confident that whoever wins, and it's up to the American people to choose, uh, the relationship will continue to thrive, and we will uh, have at our disposal a number of dialogues and mechanisms uh, to continue to enhance this relationship. That was such a good answer. You don't need any more. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant. Brilliant. That's right. It is about problems. And I, I can't say enough to support uh, the minister's positive uh, 
description of uh, our relationship and really what's happened in our, our hemisphere, which has been remarkable. Um, regarding uh, Syria, let me begin by expressing thanks to Brazil for uh, their support of the Syrian people. Uh, this um, is uh, a, an important uh, call by uh, Brazil, which has consistently said the government must stop the ongoing violence and uh, has provided much needed humanitarian support. And in fact, I think it's right to say that Brazil is home to uh, one of the largest Syrian diasporas anywhere in the world. Uh, so they know better than uh, many what is at stake. Uh, now we're looking forward to hearing the details of Special Envoy Brahimi's uh, report to the UN Security Council today. We have been in close uh, touch with him and his team. We support his call for a ceasefire for uh, the Eid uh, al Adha holiday so that Syrians could you know, celebrate uh, in peace. Um, we'd like to see the violence come to an end. There's no doubt about this. Uh, and we'd like to see a political transition uh, take hold and begin. We've been calling uh, for that uh, for more than a year. Um, we worked very hard in Geneva, as you know, some months ago to come up with a framework for ending the violence and uh, beginning a political transition. Uh, and we would like to see the Security Council adopt such a framework, but to include some consequences for all parties in the event that uh, there is not uh, a ceasefire respected or uh, a political transition uh, begun. Now, we are supporting and increasing, actually, that support uh, for the Syrian opposition uh, through uh, non-lethal assistance and training, uh, including working directly with local councils inside Syria uh, so that they can learn uh, what they need to do to serve their people in areas that they have uh, taken over from uh, the regime. And we are also working uh, extremely hard and closely with a number of like-minded countries uh, to help uh, support a leadership council to come out of meetings beginning in Doha uh, in a few uh, weeks um, so that we can have a leadership structure that uh, endorses inclusion, democratic process, po peaceful political transition, uh, and uh, reassure all Syrians, particularly uh, those who are in minority groups, that uh, there is a path forward if everyone supports it. Uh, and that's a particular concern uh, to us, and, and I discussed it uh, with Antonio, and we want to um, make it possible for there to be a credible interlocutor uh, representing uh, the uh, opposition and prevent extremists from hijacking uh, a brave revolution that is meant to fulfill the aspirations of the Syrian uh, people. Now, you're right to raise Lebanon because uh, it was a terrible uh, blow to the Lebanese people one more time to see uh, a high-level uh, assassination carried out by uh, a brutal bombing that uh, devastated um, a neighborhood in Beirut and killed uh, others and injured um, many more. I spoke with uh, the Prime Minister over the weekend to express our condolences. Uh, we were asked for support to provide FBI investigative uh, services and we will uh, and are doing so. Uh, the Lebanese Armed Forces has actually performed admir admirably in restoring order, uh, in going after um, anyone who is attempting to uh, commit violence or disrupt that order um, and urging all parties uh, to remain calm. We don't want to see a vacuum of legitimate uh, political authority that could then be taken advantage of by the Syrians or by uh, others uh, that could uh, create even greater instability and violence. Uh, so uh, we call on all parties in Lebanon to support the process uh, that President Suleiman is leading to choose a responsible, effective government that can address uh, the threats that Syria faces and hold accountable those responsible for last week's uh, bombing. Um, uh, so we're not going to um, uh, 
you know, prejudge the outcome of what the Syrians themselves are attempting to do. This must be a Lebanese uh, process, but the Lebanese people deserve so much better. Uh, they deserve to live in peace, and they deserve to have a government that reflects their aspirations, not acts as proxies and agents for outside forces. Um, now, finally, on, on uh, Benghazi, look, I, I've said it, and I'll say it one more time. Uh, no one wants to find out what happened more than I do. We are holding ourselves accountable uh, to the American people um, because not only they, but our brave diplomats uh, and development experts serving in dangerous places around the world deserve uh, no less. The Independent Accountability uh, Review Board is already hard at work looking at everything, not cherry picking, you know, one story here or one document there, but looking at everything, which I highly recommend as the appropriate approach to something as uh, complex as uh, an attack like this. Um, you know, uh, posting something on Facebook uh, is not, in and of itself, evidence. Uh, and I think it just underscores how fluid the reporting uh, was at the time and continued for some time to be. Uh, what I keep in mind is that four brave Americans were killed. And we will find out what happened. We will take whatever measures are necessary to fix anything that needs to be fixed. And we will bring those to justice who committed these murders. Um, and I think that uh, that, is, uh, that is what we have said, that is what we are doing, and uh, I'm very confident uh, that we will achieve those goals. Last one today, Luis Fernando Silva Pinto from Global TV, please. Mr. Patriota, Madam Secretary, I would uh, follow the example of my colleague. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pick up bad habits, please. <laughs> uh, Minister, if, if, if you don't mind, I would ask the question in, Portu in, in English, in, in, so uh, if you could uh, give the answer in Portuguese. Uh, uh, this is, as one would assume, the very last time that the two of you meet at this particular uh, post that you are holding. Are you, uh, uh, is, 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 are you uh, uh, less than happy with the fact that Brazil and the United States do not have a trade agreement. Um, would like to know as well when will Americans be able to get into Brazil without a visa and Brazilians get into the United States without a visa? Madam Secretary, once uh, uh, Brazil and Turkey uh, 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 brokered a, 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 a solution to the problem of, of uh, Iran, and, and that was an initiative that was met with less than enthusiasm. Uh, if Brazil were to broker a solution for the problem in Syria, since there is this partnership established with Turkey, and, and as you pointed out, Brazil has many Lebanese and, 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 and Syrians in Brazil, how would the United States government react to that? Bom, Fernando, em primeiro lugar, em relação à pergunta sobre comércio. Uh, eu diria que Brasil e Estados Unidos têm uma relação comercial intensa. Os Estados Unidos é o segundo parceiro comercial individual dos, do Brasil. A corrente comercial nos dois sentidos tem conhecido uh, recordes históricos. Uh, o último uh, desempenho tem sido mais de superávit em favor dos Estados Unidos, mas isso aí até pode ser que comece a diminuir agora, segundo as últimas estatísticas. E, aliás, nós temos, sim, acordos comerciais com os Estados Unidos. Não temos um acordo de livre comércio, mas assinamos recentemente, durante a visita do ministro Ron Kirk, uh, o representante para o comércio, um acordo sobre cooperação econômica e comercial, que tem, inclusive, produzido um, possibilidades de coordenação numa série de assuntos. Agora foi criado um subgrupo sobre investimento, que se reuniu, de modo que uma ausência de um acordo de comércio não tem sido fator de inibição do comércio. Pelo contrário, é interessante notar que o comércio Brasil e Estados Unidos cresce mais do que aquele de países que têm acordo de livre comércio com os Estados Unidos. Eu convidaria vocês até a comparar algumas estatísticas. Sobre a questão dos vistos, um, as conversas foram um, positivas, e eu também vou me encontrar dentro de poucos instantes com a senhora Janete Napolitano, é, no contexto das responsabilidades delas, é, dela, que nós estamos examinando 
essa uh, possibilidade, essa perspectiva uh, de um eventual sistema uh, livre de vistos. Isso aí não será no curto prazo, porque envolve uma série de uh, aspectos que precisam muito bem, ser muito bem examinados, inclusive um desequilíbrio grande entre o número de brasileiros que uh, visitam os Estados Unidos e o número de americanos que vêm ao Brasil. Seja como for, está estabelecido um uh, mecanismo que poderá, sim, facilitar, e já estão ocorrendo, neste momento, uh, desenvolvimentos muito positivos. Por exemplo, os consulados americanos no Brasil tem reduzido uh, os, os dias né, de processamento dos vistos. Eu acho que a média era algo como 70 dias, passou para dois ou três dias. Do nosso lado também estamos agindo com maior celeridade. Foram abertos novos consulados norte-americanos no Brasil e aqui no, nos Estados Unidos. O Brasil tem dez consulados, como vocês sabem. Queria só dizer uma palavrinha sobre Síria, uh, embora a pergunta não tenha sido dirigida a mim. Uh, nós concordamos uh, com a secretária de Estado, Hillary Clinton, que a plataforma do comunicado emitido uh, ao final da reunião do Grupo de Ação de Genebra, em 30 de junho último, fornece um caminho uh, para a transição pacífica uh, política na Síria uh, e para um fim uh, das hostilidades, uh, da violência, uh, dentro de um uh, marco multilateral. E esperamos que ele possa ser retomado no contexto desses esforços agora que o enviado especial Brahim está fazendo para... Um, Uh, conseguir um, uh, cessar fogo durante o feriado de Eid el Adha. I essentially said that um, the absence of a free trade agreement does not prevent uh, trade between Brazil and the United States from thriving. In fact, the figures have been um, better than uh, those for countries with which the U.S. does have free trade agreements. The visa situation is being discussed in a constructive way, and uh, even uh, in the absence of a, an agreement on um, foregoing visas, uh, the days that are taken for uh, the processing uh, have diminished considerably at U.S. consulates and Brazilian consulates. There are new consulates uh, that uh, the United States has opened in Brazil to help processing, and uh, Brazil has 10 consulates in the United States. And on Syria, I just mentioned our support for the communique of the Geneva Action Group, which we believe continues to provide a good platform for progress through peaceful, non-militarized uh, means. He's an all-purpose foreign minister. <laughs> I, I'm very grateful to you. And, and on, on your question, we would, of course, welcome uh, uh, Brazilian uh, participation in any effort to bring about uh, the ceasefire, to implement it, uh, to help with the political transition. Uh, the minister and I discussed uh, the ways in which both the United States and Brazil, as as large pluralistic democracies uh, stand as examples for what we hope could come uh, someday in Syria. Uh, so the minister mentioned the, the communique that came out of Geneva uh, as a result of uh, our meeting uh, there several months ago. Uh, I'm in close touch with uh, Special Envoy Brahimi, and uh, we, we are looking for a way to support his work, and this kind of framework will need the uh, strong support of uh, Brazil, which has a, uh, a very important voice uh, in trying to resolve this ongoing uh, tragic situation. Thank you all very much. Thank you.